Welcome to round two of the WA Sporting Car Club 2024 season. Day one features HQ Holden, improved production cars, street cars, production cars, saloon cars, sports sedans, sports cars and WA muscle cars, and XL Cup. Race number one, on a beautiful Saturday morning at carco.com.au Raceway, saw the Hyundai XLs and a huge field of Hyundai XLs. Some 24 cars present for round number two. And it was great to see a really good battle during qualifying with Carlos Ambrosio just taking pole from Zane Rhodes. Anthony Jewell and not far behind him was also Jack Coyulo. So the top four or five cars in this one we'll keep an eye on. As we wait for the green flag towards the rear of the field. Our hard-working officials at carco.com.au raceway. The red light on and revs to rise and away we go for race number one of round two of the WA Sporting Car Club's season 2024. And a very good getaway for Carlos Ambrosio in car number 14. Moves across to the middle of the racetrack and defends his line from Zane Ren Rhodes as they go into turn number one for the first time. And already this top four or five cars starting to get away from the rest of the field. Rhodes throwing everything at Carlos Ambrosio across the top of the hill and down into turn number six for the first time. In third place was car number 28 of Anthony Jewell with Jack Coyolo and Tristan Moore, a newcomer to Hyundai XL Racing. He's up there in fifth position at the moment as they come down to complete lap number one. was still Ambrosio over Rhodes on lap number two. Anthony Jewell having his hands full with Jack Coyulo and then Tristan Moore for Pomtech Motorsport in car, uh, car number 16 as they crossed over the top of the wheel and Coyulo all over the back of Anthony Jewell looking for a way through on the entry into turn six. Ambrosio out on driver's left with Rhodes up the inside looking for a good run down into turn number seven. This is the end of lap number two and it's going to be Zane Rhodes in car number 73 that crosses the line only just ahead of Carlos Ambrosio in car number 14 and as we can see Carlos Ambrosio a great turn of speed down the main straight able to regain first position into turn number one. They head up through the left-hander here at carco.com.au Raceway. Rhodes now falling back a little bit as the safety car flags and boards come out and a bit of confusion by all of the drivers at the top of the hill as to who was the first to see the yellow flags and the safety car boards. But unfortunately for Robert Tune, Unfortunately, a suspension failure by the look of it down on the entry into turn number seven. And that put paid to his race number one for round two of the WA Sporting Car Club season 2024. Great battle between Ambrosio, Zane Rhodes and Anthony Jewell and Jack Coyulo unfortunately interrupted by the safety car, which we had for a three lap duration. And the checkered flag was thrown and the winner for race number one for the Hyundai XL goes to car number 14 of Carlos Ambrosio over 73 of Zane Rhodes and Anthony Jewell in car number 28 for third position.
race number two here at carco.com.au raceway and it's the holden hqs 385,000 of these cars were produced in their lifetime in many different variants but this was the most popular and as you can see by the amount of cars still on the grid racing some 30 years later the holden hqs have got the never say die philosophy about their category and it was great to see ryan davis car number 49 on outside pole position after a really strong qualifying He's sitting alongside Stuart Kenny, that man that has taken everything before him, not only in 2024, but towards the end of last year as well. A real standout in the Holden HQ category. Then we went back to Michael Woodbridge and uh, Michael Howlett, the current state champion, as they head down to turn number one for the first time. And Stuart Kenny, a blinder of a start. Three or four car links over Ryan Davis and Michael Howlett as they go side by side through turn number one and up through the S's for the first time. Stuart Kenny already starting to get away from Michael Howlett and Ryan Davis. It's a good size, a good quality field of HQs head their way into turn number four for the first time. Mark Watkins not too far behind Troy Kent at the moment as they headed down into turn number six for the first time. Really good scrap at the rear of the field with Peter Marsh, Todd Faulkner, Rory Sharp back there as well. But as they turned onto the main straight for the first time, it was all Stuart Kenny from Michael Howlett. Ryan Davis now coming under attack as they cross the line. And unfortunately for Ryan Davis, a broken head stud in the top of the motor is going to put pay to his day. Unfortunately, that car has shown some great pace when it's good. But as we can see here, already starting to slip down the field. This great battle, this is where it's been towards the end of 2023 and into 2024. Kenny versus Howlett. Is it down into turn number one. It's still Stuart Kenny by one car length over Michael Howlett. And unfortunately, this race came to an abrupt end with a big impact for Peter Marsh in car number 68 into the green HQ of Mark Watkins. Great to say that both drivers were able to get out and walk away from this very heavy impact. And as you can see by the Motorsport Australia graphic, a 30 point penalty to Bo Pangler. Extensive damage done to both of those Holden HQs and it'll be remarkable if we see them back at carco.com.au raceway in 2024. So due to this race being shortened, insufficient laps, uh, there was no result. Race number three was for street cars, improved production cars and 3E production cars and a good sized field of all of the three categories combined. And it was that man, Matt Cherry, in the beautiful Holden Monaro on pole position alongside him, Ben Peachy, in a very unusual street car, the 200B Datsun. But all eyes were on the third row where we have a four wheel drive WRX of Joe Karukin and he got a great start. Three wide as they went down into turn number one and then they backed out of it with Jared Carey in the 350Z LS1 powered Nissan taking third place and these three making a bolt as they go up to turn number four for the first time it was all Matt Cherry from Ben Peachy Jared Carey in the Nissan Joe Karukin and Grant Jellin having a great battle as they head down into turn number six. But up and over the top of the hill, it was car number 44 of Matt Cherry. From Ben Peachy, Jared Carey.
and then Grant Jelland holding off Joe Karukin and John Caligari and came straight across to driver's right to defend his line. And we keep an eye on this battle between Grant Jelland, John Caligari as they head up through turn number four. But over the top of the hill, Matt Cherry pulling away as you would expect in that beautiful Holden Monaro. And John Caligari just floats over the top of the hill. The great burst of speed out of turn number six. Gets in front of the Mark I Ford Escort of Grant Jellin. And starting to get away from the WRX of Joe Karukin. And meanwhile, back in the pack, Damon Croxon having it all his own way from Gary Utterson, Neville Zaccoli, and Cameron Burns. Caligari doing the best he can to stay with this middle Mark I Escort. Of course, more power up and over the top of the hill, but only just. It's a very quick Mark I Escort of Grant Jellin. Jared Carey with the LS1 powered uh, Nissan 350Z. Still waiting on his upgraded brake package, so our fellow competitors be forewarned, that car will be able to stop a lot better in the coming months. Unfortunately for Joe Karukin, car number 95, game over here in race number one. Matt Cherry now starting to slice his way through the slower traffic with Stephen Taylor in the BMW, doing the right thing, staying out of Matt's way and allowing the Monaro to get up on two wheels as he goes up through the S's. Now on the tail of Tim Riley. Kyle McPherson having his second run at carco.com.au raceway. A newcomer to circuit racing. And we welcome back Nigel Wilson after a long layoff from racing. It's great to have Nigel and the Commodore back out on the circuit. Sokoli now putting the move on Damon Croxon, Cameron Burns. And here comes the overall leader. It's car number 44 of Matt Cherry. Makes little work of the slower cars. He comes down now on driver's right of Gary Utterson in the Tirana. At the chequered flag, it was Matt Cherry in car number 44 takes the win from John Caligari and Neil Pollard, a stout third position. In our streetcar battle, it goes to Ben Peachy in the Datsun 200B from Jared Carey and Peter Callow in the R32 Nissan. And our 3E production car winner is Damon Croxon from Laurie Whitome and Kyle McPherson for third. Saloon cars for their race number one here at carco.com.au raceway. And it's Robbie Markon, the seasoned veteran on pole position alongside the local hotshot in Jackson Kello. Mark Walker Watkins also out there with Mason Harvey and Grant Johnson. This should be a thriller. With the old and the, the new on the front row. And Robbie Mark on a seasoned veteran of carco.com.au raceway in many different categories. And it was a fairly even start from both of them as they head down into turn number one. But Mark on just half a car length in front on the turn in. 
Grant Johnson having a look up the inside of Jackson Kello going too wide on the exit of turn number two. But it was all Robbie Mark on as they went into turn number four for the first time and up and over the top of the hill. Big field of pro category cars and also our pro-am drivers this year again being dominated so far by Michael Koberstein as Robbie Marcon now pulls out to a three car length advantage into turn number seven from Jackson Kello, Grant Johnson and Mason Harvey. Oberstein from Craig James as far as our Pro-Am category cars go as they head down into turn number one again it's still Robbie Mark on by one car length over Jackson Callow and Grant Johnson Mason Harvey right there in case Johnson makes a mistake very unlikely the guy is so good in whatever vehicle he puts his backside Mason Harvey just waiting and waiting as they go up and over the top of the hill again and Mason Harvey no way through for the Ford Falcon on the Holden Commodore of Grant Johnson tries to get a tow up and over the top of the hill but too far away from Mason Harvey now as they jumped over the top of the hill Mason Harvey able to get through on Grant Johnson Turns the headlights on and tells the guys in front he is on his way as Jackson Callow slides underneath Robbie Marcon into turn number seven. Some great driving, everybody staying on the right side of the ripple strip, although Mason Harvey tests its limits. Again, the two Ford Falcons out in front, followed by a third Ford of Mason Harvey as Jackson Callow tries to drive underneath Robbie Marcon. Really loosens up the rear of Marcon's car, but with the experience on board, Robbie able to drive out of that one and maintain pole position as they head up and over the top of the hill. And unfortunately for Warren Ellis, he's had an off at the top of turn number five. And unfortunately, we go safety car. Unfortunately for the safety car for three laps, the chequered flag falls and it was Robbie Marcon over Jackson Callow and Mason Harvey in the pro category. And for our pro-am drivers, the win goes to Craig James over Michael Koberstein and a fantastic effort for car number seven of Neil Streetfield. Sports sedans, sports cars and the WA muscle cars. We're next out on the track at carco.com.au raceway and on pole position in that Ford Falcon powered by a Chev, it's Ryan Humphreys, the traveller. Alongside him in that beautiful orange and black Porsche of Richard Bloomfield. Then we go back to Adam Marjoram, former Super Ute and Dunlop Super 2 driver. Great to have Adam back driving for Greg Barr this weekend and the return of Grant Hill in car number 88. Red car this year, gone from orange to a red car, so people still trying to get used to that new livery on board for Grant Hill. pick up on our drivers over the top of the hill and already Ryan Humphreys five or six car links in front of the Castrol sponsored car of Adam Marjoram. Richard Bloomfield driving away from car three of Walter Eppel and Grant Hill with Chris McKenzie. Great to see the RX-7 back out onto the track as well as the first of our muscle cars comes through and that's car 98 of Clint Rayner. It's got Brett Nile, car 54, right in the boot lid of car 98 of Clint Rayner as they came down into turn number one. 
and up through the S's. Richard Bloomfield getting close to the back of the V8 supercar now as they headed up through turn four. With Grant Hill not too far off the back of Bloomfield. As we can see, Bloomfield really putting in the hard work down into turn number seven, really closes up on the back of Marjoram, who's having understeering problems with the Castrol Holden Commodore. And Bloomfield now looking for a way through as Marjoram just moves over to get a better entry into the corner. And Bloomfield sticks the Porsche right through on driver's right and now starts to drive away as they headed up through the S's. This led to a great battle between Grant Hill in the red BF Falcon and Adam Marjoram still attacking the back of Richard Bloomfield, looking for a way through in turn number six, but the Porsche too good under brakes. Grant Hill coming to grips with this fully rebuilt car over the off season. Unfortunately missed round one in March, but great to have Grant Hill back and that iconic BF Falcon. So we catch up with the WA muscle cars and it was still Clint Rayner from Brett Nile and Chase Hoy. But Ryan Humphrey well out in front from Richard Bloomfield in the Porsche. Then Adam Marjoram still holding off. Grant Hill as they came out onto the main straight. Chase Hoy and Chris McKenzie. Swapping positions on this lap. They came across the top of the hill. McKenzie, unfortunately, with uh, engine issues towards the latter end of race number one. But it was all 98 of Clint Rayner from Brett Nile, and now Chase Hoy up into third, getting all defensive, that little RX-7's all over the back of Chase Hoy, as Mark Watkins in car number 29 gets it all sideways, goes right out into the marbles, and allows Jason Pride in car number 14 to drive straight underneath him and drive away. Watkins, a very busy man driving a Holden HQ, a saloon car, and now a WA muscle car, all on the one day. But Mackenzie not letting Brett Nile get away in the WA muscle car, car number 54. Mackenzie really starting to push Nile. He'd have to use a bit more of his tyre than what he would anticipate it. But this man, how good is Ryan Humphrey? From Richard Bloomfield in car number 57. Came out onto the main straight. Adam Marjoram takes a good sized chunk of the exit kerb on turn seven. Still holding off Grant Hill. Travelled Ryan Humphreys having it all his own way. And Chris McKenzie dive bombs on Clint Rayner in car number 98. The brand new car this year for Jason Pride, still coming to grips with this new car, as Watkins is still coming to grips with car number 29. And at the chequered flag, the Chev-powered Ford Falcon Car number 30 of Ryan Humphreys takes a comfortable win 
from Adam Marjoram and Grant Hill. Our sports cars dominated by Richard Bloomfield over Walter Eppel. And then WA Muscle Cars, Clint Rayner takes the win from Brett Nile and Chase Hoy. After the race, Slim Jim caught up with Jason Pride. I'm at Carco Raceway and I'm with uh, Jason Pride. Jason, thanks very much for spending some time with us this afternoon. Now, Jason, you're a, an accomplished sprint car competitor and now you're, you're driving muscle cars. There must be a massive difference between dirt and bitumen. Yeah, there certainly is. There's certainly uh, not a lot you can take between the two categories that we run. But, um, yeah, they've both got their own pros and cons, I suppose. But, yeah, it's just like cricket and golf, I guess. Yeah, two completely so, different So with sports. muscle cars, did it take you a fair while to get used to the difference or, or it sort of came on pretty quick? Uh, probably initially to get up to the rough speed wasn't too bad, but trying to get the last bit out of it now is quite challenging. So, yeah, it's a, certainly a, a big challenge and we're looking forward to it. So one thing I've noticed since I've been coming here to Carco Raceway, it's the, it's the environment that you create for yourself with your team and also your sponsorship that makes a massive difference. So tell me about your team and how this, you know, how you keep the car on the on the road. Yeah, it's definitely not a one-man sport, that's for sure, sure, even though there's only one driver and I'm lucky enough to do that. But yeah, we've got a, a big team behind us. So um, Cody and Russell, obviously, there every week in the shed and, and most days and working on it. And my partner, Chanel, obviously supports us a lot as well well and we've got really good um, sponsors that help us get down the road as Who well. Who are your sponsors? Let's give them a plug. So Harman Transportation Hot Shots, they're, they're one of our key ones and, and Castrol um, Lubricants come on board this year as well as Mini Clip, Sun City Plumbing and Scarterfield Smash Repairs. We were talking earlier about the fact that there's only a limited amount of competition here in WA that you may have to travel over, over east to sort of broaden your experiences and, 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 and your capacity as a driver. So what are you looking forward to in the future? What's the plan? Are you going to go over east this year? or are you going to wait till next year until you consolidate the car this year? Yeah, I think we'll see how today goes, but that's the, the current plan is, is we'll probably head over east and run with the guys over there, just learn some new tracks, get some more experiences. The fields are, are quite large over there, so it'll be cool to, to run in some of the big fields and just see what it's all about. For more of that interview with Slim Jim and Jason Pride, go to the West Australian Sporting Car Club YouTube page. A big field of Hyundai Cup XL Cup competitors this was going to be a fantastic race between Carlos Ambrosio and Zane Rhodes. On the second row was Anthony Jewell with Jack Kaiulo. Then we had Tristan Moore and Dave Charnley. Harrison Berez in there as well, our youngest competitor at carco.com.au this season at the sprightly age of 15 years of age and a big future has Harrison Beresford. As the red light goes out and it was a pretty even start down towards turn number one for the first time. Rhodes looking for an outside pass that was never going to work. But Ambrosio in car number 14 takes the lead and heads up through the S's for the first time. Anthony Jewell, three car links behind in car number 28. And then we have Jack Coyulo and Tristan Moore. up on our leaders over the top of the hill for the first time and it's Carlos Ambrosio with Zane Rhodes right in the boot lid. We go two car links back to 28 of Anthony Jewell and Jack Coyulo trying to get a bit of a toe up and over the top of the hill from that car in front of Anthony Jewell. Out onto the straight for the first time. And across the line, it's Carlos Ambrosio from a hard-charging Zane Rhodes, always looking for a way through. But how's the battle further back in the pack, mid-pack here? It was raging. And that's one thing that we really love about our XL Cup racing here in Western Australia. There's battles everywhere throughout the field. The move, the first move, has been put on by Zane Rhodes, who briefly grabbed the lead. Carlos Ambrosio straight back underneath him on the entry into turn number four and maintains the point up and over the hill for the first time. So you can see Rhodes got a great exit out of turn number six. He goes straight down the inside of Ambrosio with Craig. Charnley also making a move now up into P6. 
He's chasing Tristan Moore in car number 16. But it was Zane Rhodes this time across the stripe from Ambrosio looking for an outside run again with Craig Jewell and da Kai Jack Kaiulo in fourth position. This battle up the front was to rage for the entire duration of this event with the race lead changing some four or five times during the course of the race. A change in position again as they come down into turn number seven. This time it's Ambrosio up the inside of Zane Rhodes, the exact same move that Rhodes put on earlier in the race. And now Anthony Jewell with a bit of a sniff here for second place, tries to run around the outside of Zane Rhodes and Kaiulo right in the boot lid this time of Anthony Jewell. And you see the momentum that Ambrosio got off the exit of turn number seven, was able to maintain the lead as they went across the stripe. Anthony Jewell briefly up into second position, but it was these two, 14 and 73. Zane Rose this time, the exact same move being applied again for the third lap in a row. They're just changing positions on the racetrack every time they come over the top of the hill and putting the same move on each other down there into turn number seven. This three car battle was to go on for the whole duration of this event as well with some of our mid-pack runners. And again, Rhodes getting all defensive this time, driving right down the middle of the racetrack, not allowing Ambrosio a chance to do the over and under. And this time Ambrosio hung out to dry and Anthony Jewell briefly again gets up into second position on the exit of turn number one. But Ambrosio was to fight back yet again and maintain second position. As we can see this three car battle up and over the top of the hill. These little four cylinder front wheel drive cars, very, very exciting category here at carco.com.au raceway. Again, we see Anthony Jewell briefly up into second place, but Zane Rhodes, car number 73, just drives right underneath him on the entry into turn number four and was able to maintain that second position again as they crested the top of the hill. In fact, Rhodes goes to the front and Ambrosio now putting the same move on Anthony Jewell in car number 28. Zane Rhodes trying to get away now from Carlos Ambrosio, but at the line by one one hundredth of a second, it went to car number 14 of Carlos Ambrosio from Zane Rhodes in car number 73 with Anthony Jewell in third, Jack Coyulo, a great hard charge in car number seven for fourth, and Dave Charnley takes out P5. Holden HQ's for race number two. And because race number one was a no result, the starting order for race number two goes all the way back to the qualifying order. And it sees Stuart Kenny on pole position from car 49 of Ryan Davis. Then we have Michael Howlett in third and Mick Woodbridge making a one-off appearance back at Carco Raceway for season 2024. And at the start, it was Stuart Kenny by half a car length over Ryan Davis in car number 49 as they go down into turn number one for the first time. And that margin is half a boot length between these first two cars. And we go back to Michael Howlett and a long way back already is Mick Woodbridge in car number 74. But as we've seen before, you cannot discredit Mick Woodbridge. over the hill for the first time. It's the dominant car out in front of Stuart Kenny at the moment. A bit of smoke there from car number three of Troy Kent as he came up and over the hill for the first time. But this was an awesome battle on the first couple of laps here between Kenny and Davis in 49. Then we had Michael Howlett joining 
the back of Ryan Davis's car and Mick Woodbridge now back into fourth position. You see Brett O'Keefe getting it very wide on the exit. A second race meeting only for Brett O'Keefe. It was still Kenny from Davis who gets it all wrong on the exit of turn number one. And that's going to allow Michael Woodbridge to get through in car number 74. And Troy Kent, not too far off the back of Ryan Davis, but a good fight developing down the back of the pack here between Rory Sharp, Phil Breen and Brett O'Keefe. Michael Howlett now trying a new way of getting around turn number four as he tries to hunt down Stuart Kenny. Nick Woodbridge up into third after disposing of car 49 of Ryan Davis on the exit of turn number one. Now Woodbridge looking for a run down the inside of Michael Howlett. Not going to happen for him on this race. It's all Kenny and Howlett at the moment by two car links over Mick Woodbridge. Then we go back four car links to Ryan Davis and Troy Kent in car number three, the blue and white HQ Holden sitting back there in P5. For Michael Howlett, and this is going to be a great three-way battle here. I don't think Davis is going to be able to draw this pack. Side by side, down into turn number seven with Michael Howlett, really late on the brakes. Go side by side with Stuart Kenny and Mick Woodbridge now having a look at both of these two and it has to fall back into line as the approach to turn number one. Mick Woodbridge been around the sport for a long, long time, done many, many laps around Carco Raceway. A very experienced driver. We're looking for a move to come towards the end of the race here on Michael Howlett. These top four able to break away from the rest of the field with Mick Woodbridge now looking for a run down the inside into turn number six. And for some reason, up and over the top of the hill, Mick Woodbridge has got in front of Michael Howlett by a fair distance. I'd say Michael made, uh, made a small mistake over the other side of the racetrack. And that's allowed Mick Woodbridge up into second. His battle towards the rear of the field was still going for the entire duration of this event with Troy Kent, Todd Faulkner, Brett O'Keefe, and they'll be shortly joined by Phil Breen. And Bo Pangler at the front of this little pack as they head down into turn number six. So for the first time in a long time there's been a different challenger to Stuart Kenny as we watch Troy Kent in car number three slide up the inside of car 24 of Todd Faulkner but Todd able to drive around the outside of the blue number three and up through the S's. Kenny now starting to drive away from Mick Woodbridge in car number 74. We go back to Michael Howlett. Woodbridge able to get a better exit out of turn number six and really close up on the back of Stuart Kenny. So he heads up and across the line and as this battle, this is the battle that we were saying was raging all the way for the duration of this race. Just like an elastic band, Troy Kent, Todd Faulkner, Bo Pangler in there, and Phil Breen in car 75. As they came down the hill, Michael Woodbridge looking for an outside pass. It's not going to happen down here in turn number seven. Stuart Kenny's awake up to that in car 72 and goes all defensive trying to stop Mick Woodbridge from getting past. As they cross the stripe, it goes to Stuart Kenny by three tenths of a second over car 74 of Mick Woodbridge. And these guys having a bit of a wave to each other, a great piece of sportsmanship from both of these two. 
as we said, your winner is Stuart Kenny from Mick Woodbridge, Michael Howlett for third, Ryan Davis hangs in there in car 49 for fourth, and rounding out our five goes to car three of Troy Kent. Streetcar, IPC and 3E production cars out on the circuit for race number two here at carco.com.au raceway. On pole position, car number 44, the Holden Monaro of Matt Cherry and alongside him the Datsun 200B Triple S of Ben Peachy. But a really good start from Jared Carey to stay with Matt Cherry and he will go into second position as they turn the cars into turn one for the first time. Another good start from John Caligari as well. Gets underneath Ben Peachy and Peachy goes from second back to fourth. Neil Pollard also having a good run here on your Saturday at carco.com.au raceway as our leader for the first time up and over the hill and driving away from the pack. It's the Holden Monaro of Matt Cherry with Jared Carey in the 350 Nissan in second with Caligari now looking to put a move on Jared Carey as they exit turn number six. Ben Peachy able to fight back and get one more position on John Caligari at the end of lap number one. So as they cross the stripe, it was Matt Cherry from Jared Carey, Ben Peachy and John Caligari. Cameron Burns having a good race out there as well. The Burns Motorsport car. Flying the horsepower is the Holden Monaro of Matt Cherry. And as you can see, a sizable distance already back to the next competitor after only two laps. Jared Carey, Ben Peachy, and John Caligari. Carey starting to drive defensive now. You can see Peachy getting bigger and bigger in the rear vision mirror on the exit of turn number one. He's got three car links over Ben Peachy in the Datsun 200 Triple S. And our mid-pack runners with Cameron Burns in car number 17. Stephen Taylor out there in the BMW. And John Caligari down from the northwest of Western Australia for this race meeting. And Nigel Wilson having a good run again right in the boot lid of Gary Utterson in the Tirana as they head down into turn number six and Neville Zaccoli in the Chev Camaro, not too far off the rear of those guys. Peachy getting closer to the back end of that Nissan of Jared Carey. And Nigel Wilson pulls out and sends one down into turn number seven from the previous postcode and overtakes Neil Pollard, Gary Utterson, in the Tirana, having a look on the inside of Neil Pollard as well as they come across the stripe here at carco.com.au raceway. And Utterson able to pull off that manoeuvre and gain one position over Neil Pollard. Cameron Burns now looking in the rear vision mirror and you'll see Damien Croxon in the Renault Megane, closing in on the back of the Burns Motorsport car. And we can see now that the move has been made by Ben Peachy over Jared Carey. And then the immediate following in turn number four, Carey goes back in front of Peachy, but Peachy arguing the point down there in turn number six. Cherry starting to slice his way through the slower traffic. He's rounding up Stephen Taylor. Pick up on the R32. Car number 67 of Peter Kello. A really good battle developing back here with Cameron Burns and Damon Croxon. Unfortunately for Nigel Wilson taking an excursion into the sand as evident by the yellow sand coming out of the back of the car. Ben Peachy and Jared Carey having to drive around that vehicle. And Nigel Wilson retiring back to the paddock area. Unfortunately didn't finish this race 
and unfortunate also for John Caligari, who unfortunately came to a stop over the back side of the track over at turn number six, and we went under safety car conditions. And unfortunately, the chequered flag fell on this race behind the safety car. Everybody just filing past the chequered flag for the last time. And it was all Matt Cherry from Neil Pollard and Cameron Burns in improved production. It was Jared Carey from Ben Peachy and Peter Kello in the R32 takes out third position. And our 3E production cars goes to Damien Croxon over Laurie Whitome. Holden versus Ford battle for race number two of our saloon cars at carco.com.au raceway. Of course, the pro category starting up the front and from about mid-pack backwards would be our pro-am drivers. A good field of both pro and pro-am drivers here on your Saturday. And on pole position, it's Robbie Marcon alongside Jackson Kello and then Mason Harvey and Grant Johnson. It was a great start by both of our pole sitters as they head down into turn number one for the first time. Bit of a touch there and Jackson Kello loses the driver's rear vision mirror. A touch ball play on. And as they head up through the S's for the first time, it's Robbie Marcon from Jackson Kello, Mason Harvey, Grant Johnson and Mark Watkins. Michael Koberstein leads the Pro-Am category up and over the hill for the first time with Craig James chasing him down. Two car links behind as they tilt into turn number six. Up and over the top of the hill for the first time, it's Robbie Marcon and then this side-by-side -side battle. The two young guns with Mason Harvey sliding up the inside of car number 225 of Jackson Kello and then the multiple national champion in many categories, Grant Johnson holding on for fourth with Mark Walker Watkins in the yellow and black car. There's the first of the moves with Jackson Kello, a big break lock up and into the side of Mason Harvey down there on the entry into turn number one. Some very aggressive driving from these saloon car drivers as again Jackson Kello dives underneath Mason Harvey who gets it all sideways getting out into the marbles and this gave Grant Johnson a good look up the inside as they headed up through into the S's. While Callow and Harvey were playing games in second and third, this has allowed Robbie Marcon, a seasoned veteran at Carco Raceway, to drive away from the pack. And on the very next lap, it's back on again with Jackson Kello right in the boot lid of Robbie Marcon. And we saw that in race number one where Jackson tried to drive underneath the boot of Robbie Marcon. Mark Walker Watkins getting ever closer to the car in front. The car number 93, the all black car again this year of Gary Hills. Very hard racing going on out there on the circuit at the moment in lap number three. As Marcon comes across turn number five and drops down into turn six. A comfortable margin over Jackson Kello. Pick up on Neil Streetfield. Chasing down the Stevens car as they head up through the S's. And side by side action again. What we've become accustomed to with our saloon cars here, side by side off the exit of turn one and side by side all the way up through the S's. Now Jackson Callow looks for a run up the inside of Robbie Marcon on the entry into turn number seven and a safe move this time from car number 225 
Now, Robbie Marcon, all of that experience drives down, right down driver's side. Again, they touch mirrors, and this time it's going to be Marcon who gets the advantage into turn number one. A bit of a brake lock up there, and Jackson Kello straight back along the side of him as they go up through the S's. What a great battle in the saloon car pro category with now Craig James. As well, we pick up on Jackson Kello, unfortunately, side by side again with Robbie Marcon. It just loses the rear end of the car at the exit of turn four. Jackson doing a little bit of gardening out there as he rejoins the track, just shakes the car to get some of the sand out and uh, get those tyres back to working order again. This car number seven of Neil Streetfield having a really good day, trying to go rally driving here on the exit of turn number one, has a bit of a tank slapper on the way out and that's allowed three or four cars to go through. This is your battle for the Pro-Am category with car 46 of Michael Koberstein, only just in front of car 10 of Craig James. Again, we go three wide on the entry into turn number one. Jackson Kello now trying to recover from that spin at turn number one, uh, turn four, sorry as Jackson Kello recovers from that incident at turn number four. And a big one up the inside from Neil Streetfield makes contact with Reg Ralph in the car number 41. And unfortunately for Reg, it has to drive off the track. And Neil Streetfield gaining positions. Hand over fist towards the conclusion of this one. We see Jackson Kello starting to make his way through the slower cars. Up and over the top of the hill, Neil Street feels so loose in that car. Really defensive, driving from the left to the right-hand side of the road. He's totally entitled to do that. But up the front, Mason Harvey coming alongside Robbie Marcon decides to back out of it towards the entrance into turn number seven. Gets right into the boot lid and drafts Robbie Marcon down the main straight. Reg Ralph making contact with the white car. Didn't quite pick up on who the driver of the white car was, but as they crossed the line, it was another win for Robbie Marcon in car number 82. He takes the win from Mason Harvey in second position. Grant Johnson up into third. Mark Watkins for fourth. And young Tyson Sadler, the Competition Drivers Club Driver of the Day Award, goes to car number 36 of Tyson Sadler in fifth position. With our Pro-Am category going to Craig James over Michael Koberstein and Damien Stevens in car number 98 for third. Sports sedans, sports cars and WA muscle cars getting ready for a start here at carco.com.au raceway with that man on pole position again, car number 30 of Ryan Humphreys alongside Richard Bloomfield and then we go back to Adam Marjoram alongside Grant Hill on the second row and a very slow start rolled right up to the carco.com.au start line before Ryan Humphrey accelerated away. Was able to get a good lead down into turn number one and so was Adam Marjoram who just muscled Richard Bloomfield out of the way and that also allowed Walter Eppel in another one of our Porsches to come up into third position as they headed towards turn number four for the first time. Grant Hill back in fifth position as they crested the top of the hill for the first time. The first of the WA muscle cars again is car number 98 of Clint Rayner over Brett Nile and Chase Hoy.
see the beautiful VZ Commodore, the Richards Commodore, famous for hitting a kangaroo at Bathurst many years ago when it was driven by the father and son team of Stephen and Jim Richards. But again in this one, it was all Ryan Humphreys doing it easy out in front from the VZ Commodore of Adam Marjoram. Walter Apple still maintaining third position at the moment from the newly repainted car of Grant Hill. We go back a long way to Richard Bloomfield. Very unusual to see the Bloomfield Porsche that far back. With the WA muscle cars not too far off that big rear wing with Clint Rayner still leading from Brett Nile and Chase Hoy. And Chris McKenzie coming through in the RX-7. Then we have Jason Pride, Ron Moller and Mark Walker Watkins. Getting the Dodge Challenger all sideways out of turn number one, using up all of that available rubber on the rear of car number 29 is Mark Watkins. Grand Hill right in the boot lid now of Walter Eppel, looking for a way through on the way down into turn number six. And same could be said for Brett Nile looking for a way through on Clint Rayner in car number 98. There's the move from Grand Hill over Walter Eppel in the Porsche. He muscles the BF Falcon through turn number seven. And while he's exiting turn number seven, Ryan Humphreys is exiting turn number one and heading up through the S's. Clint Rayner doing a great job out in front of the WA muscle car field. Six cars on display here on your Saturday. Jason Pride and Ron Moller having a great battle further back towards the rear of the field and then being rounded up by car number 29 of Mark Watkins. from Marjoram and Grant Hill. But as we see towards the conclusion of this race, the Marjoram VZ Commodore starting to go backwards as Chase Hoy applies the pressure to Brett Nile, tries to run around the outside in turn number four. He's gonna run out of concrete over there. And uh, that allows Brett Nile to straighten the car up and drive its way through turn number four and take back second position in the WA muscle cars. These three, the cream of the crop as far as WA muscle car racing in 2024 goes. hanging in there behind Ron Moller as they head down into turn number one. Clint Rayner, bit of a compression lock up there in the rears of the car locking up on the entry into turn number one. And a big lose. Car number 29 of Mark Watkins driving for Peter George this weekend as we take another look from a different angle and unfortunately just losing the rear of the car on the entry into turn number four, he was able to get back on the circuit and continue on. But Chase Hoy really applying the blowtorch now to the back of car 54 of Brett Nile, looking for a run down the inside into turn six, but it wasn't to eventuate. And it was all this man, Ryan Humphrey, car number 30. And again, we see the back end of Rainer's car stepping out on the entry into turn number one.
Grant Hill really making inroads now onto the back of Adam Marjoram as Chase Hoy tries to do the outside run on Brett Nile. Unfortunately, in the wrong position as we uh, just get a brief look at Chris McKenzie's car starting to slow quite significantly on the exit of four and unfortunately runs the car off on the entry into turn number seven and a retirement for the RX-7 car number 50 of Chris McKenzie. Grant Hill now, something desperately went wrong with the Marjoram car and unfortunately fell a long way back and Grant Hill at the line comes up runner up to this man. Ryan Humphreys takes the win in sports sedans from Grant Hill and Adam Marjoram some six seconds behind Grant Hill. In sports cars it goes to Richard Bloomfield over Walter Eppel and Chris McKenzie and WA muscle cars Clint Rayner, Brett Nile from Chase Hoy. After the race, Slim Jim catches up with Adam Marjoram. I'm joined by Adam Marjoram, who normally drives V8 Super Utes, but you've got a very special car behind us, Adam. Tell us all about it. This is Greg Barr's supercar, and you're going to be running it this weekend here at uh, Carco Raceway. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, very, very fortunate. PE 043 for the sleuthers out there. So, X Perkins uh, Engineering V8 Supercar. Really, really cool bit of gear. H pattern retains a lot of its historical value with everything. Four anti-roll bars. The only Perkins Engineering car that actually had the four anti-roll bars. And uh, I'm the lucky guy that gets to actually steer the thing. So, And in what division are you actually driving in today with this vehicle? So, I'm in uh, sports cars, uh, sports sedans, that, that kind of, that group of cars. So, okay. Yeah. So that really what you're doing is that you're showing a great bit of like car history mm. to the people here at Carco Raceway this weekend. Absolutely. I mean, you know, this this is this car here is one of the reasons I actually got into motorsport. Um, it was a car that I grew up watching on TV and um, so the, the historical significance of the car is, is quite high. Uh, and for me to, to be able to be lucky enough to drive it is... It's a dream come true. Dream, dreams come true, absolutely. Yeah. But is it good to race? Was it everything that did it fulfil your expectations is what I'm probably trying to say. It did, and I think for a couple of reasons. Is One, you grow up when you watch them with the H pattern, yeah. and the propensity to make a mistake as a driver is quite high because coming down the gears, you know, you know into turn seven, you're sixth, fifth, fourth, third, second. Um, it's it's a lot of gears to go down, and, and you can easily make a mistake out of that. Um but because the bars prepare such a lovely V8 supercar, um, it's it's true to its error. So uh, on both sides, one, it's a cool error a car to drive to, but the bar family do so much good work in the background and yeah, Dylan right. and Greg, you know, family, uh, it's, it's But that's it's one thing I've noticed, Adam, is that this entire sport is actually basically family controlled or family participation. I mean, it without is. it, it's impossible to be a participant in this, in this, in this uh, sport. To catch up with the rest of this interview with Slim Jim and Adam Marjoram, go to the WA Sporting Car Club YouTube page. XL Cup for race three here at carco.com.au raceway. And as per the previous two races, it's Ambrosio alongside Rhodes with Jewel on the second row alongside Jack Coyulo and Tristan Moore and Dave Charnley. So we just await our green flag towards the rear of the field. Now officially in starter's orders, red lights are now on. And we wait for a start here for race number three for XL Cup here at carco.com.au raceway and a good getaway by everybody getting away from the line nice and cleanly. But it was Ambrosio who's going to take the lead into turn number one from Zane Rhodes. Already two car lengths in front of Anthony Jewell and Jack Coyolo and Tristan Moore hanging in there for fifth position as they crest over the last of the right-handers before the big sweeping left-hander here at Carco Raceway. As per the previous two races, it was our two protagonists out in front, Ambrosio and Rhodes, leading the field down into turn number six for the first time. Anthony Jewell and Jack Kaiolo back in third and fourth positions. A good battle as they go down into turn number seven for the first time. Rhodes looking to put a move on and Ambrosio not going to fall for that one and maintains the lead as they cross the stripe for the first time.
Ambrosio now starting to pull away on lap number two from car 73 of Zane Rhodes. With Anthony Jewell unable to do anything about Rhodes at this stage. A good battle back here with Charnley Salvatore Russo and Steve McGregor also throwing his hat in the ring there as well. But down into turn number one, Rhodes able to get the better exit off turn number seven and drive to driver's right underneath Carlos Ambrosio. Anthony Jewell trying to get in there as well, but unfortunately just not enough momentum on the exit of turn number one to pull that move off. These roads getting the better of Ambrosio down into turn number seven this time. And Ambrosio looking for a run up the inside into turn number one. Just not enough speed to be able to pull the move off. So it's still Rhodes from Ambrosio. Then we go back to Anthony Jewell in car 28 and Jack Kaiulo. With this battle back in the mid-pack really starting to hot up. With Russo... McGregor, Nathan Seaton in there as well. And again, Ambrosio looking for a run up the inside into turn number seven. Has his nose taken off and this time Zane Rhodes runs wide and runs foul of the exit curb in turn number one. That'll be one strike against his name. Kaiulo just starting to fall away now from Anthony Jewell who has really lost a lot of ground on the front two runners but it's still Rhodes from Ambrosio, Anthony Jewell and Jack Kaiulo as we nearly go three wide on the entry into turn number one. The beautiful orange and purple car of Harrison Berry is in there, our youngest driver at 15 having a ball out there in his first full year of competition in XL Cup. It looks like Zane Rhodes has this one under control as they come out of turn number seven. Ambrosio right in the slipstream trying to get a pull and pull out. Maybe try and go around the inside, but he's going to run out of time. And it's a great win there for car 73 of Zane Rhodes. He's fairly happy about it as well as he enters into turn number one. The winner, Zane Rhodes in car number 73 from 14 of Carlos Ambrosio and rounding out the podium, Anthony Jewell in car number 28. And for the last time today, the Holden HQs make their way out onto the circuit. Just awaiting our green flag towards the back of the field. There it is there. Everybody in their correct order, ready to get going here for the last race for the Holden HQs. Race number three here at carco.com.au raceway. Mick Woodbridge from the right-hand side of the racetrack tries to move over straight away on Stuart Kenny, but Stuart Kenny gets off to a better start. Michael Howlett swings the car out wide and then throws it into turn number one. And these three already starting to break away with Troy Kent having a great side-by-side ding-dong with Grant, uh, D Ryan Davis in 49. As they headed up through the S's, side-by-side, -side, all the way to the top of turn number four. Phil Breen, Todd Forknell, Brett O'Keefe back there as well, having a great run towards the rear of the field. But again, it was these three cars, Kenny and Michael Howlett doing battle, and we can throw Mick Woodbridge in there as well. Right in the boot lid, coming down the hill into turn number seven. Woodbridge all over the back of Kenny, and Howlett right in the boot lid now of Woodbridge as well. Davis able to break free of Troy Kent in car number three. And then we have Phil Breen trying to do a number on Todd Forknell in car number 24 as they head down into turn number one. 
Woodbridge runs wide and allows Davis to go side by side again up through the S's on lap number two. And unfortunately for Davis, had to back out of that one. Michael Howlett also having to back out and that's allowed Mick Woodbridge up into second position now. Third for Howlett, fourth for Davis as they go down in towards six. These four really starting to make a break now on car three of Troy Kent. Nice, close, competitive racing here at carco.com.au Raceway. Again in round number two of the WA Sporting Car Club season 2024. Woodbridge runs wide again, allowing Davis to put the effort through turn number four as they go side by side across the top of the hill. Davis in the blue car, Woodbridge in the green car, and again they're side by side as they go down in towards turn six. So Kenny from Howlett, Woodbridge with the better exit out of turn number six, regains position three over fourth place of Davis. Then we go back to Troy Kent just coming out onto the main straight and a long way back uh, the remainder of the field with Brett O'Keefe right back in the field because a newcomer to HQ Racing in 2024. He's right down the back with Phil Breen, Todd Forknell having a great battle. Woodbridge still able to maintain third position at the moment as they go across the top of the hill. We pick up on Troy Kent just leaving the shot. But this is where the battle really was with Bo Pangler in there as well. Brett O'Keefe looking for an outside run on Todd Forknell in the orange 24. Michael Howlett now starting to look a little bit more aggressive as he gets really close to the back end of car 72 of Stuart Kenny. A bit of smoke coming out of the back of uh, Michael Woodbridge's car there as Davis has been able to get in front. Woodbridge looks for a run down the inside into turn number one. It's not going to pay off. And Davis maintains third position. Bo Pangler starting to move away now from Phil Breen, Todd Forknell and Brett O'Keefe. And again, Woodbridge side by side with Davis for third and fourth. Davis should be able to slide under and he does. He maintains third position, but this is an awesome battle out in front. This has happened nearly every race towards the end of last year and again into season 2024. Kenny versus Howlett. Very clean racing, hardly any panel damage at all with these front runners. Phil Breen now being able to break away from the rest of that field down the back there, including Brett O'Keefe and Todd Forknell, trying to catch the back of Bo Pangler. Out onto the main straight again, it's car 72 of Stuart Kenny. So we pick up on car 3 of Troy Kent. A pretty lonely day out there in about 4th, 5th position. But Kenny now starting to get defensive, he can sense a move coming from Michael Howlett. Michael gets the better run out onto the main straight. It's a drag race towards the finish line and it's going to go to Stuart Kenny. Three from three again today here at carco.com.au Raceway. He takes a great win and the win for the day over Michael Howlett in car number one. And then we go back to Mick Woodbridge in car 74. Troy Kent takes out fourth position. And unfortunately for Ryan Davis, a DNF after being up as high as third position earlier in the race. Street cars, improved production and 3E production cars out on the circuit for their final race of the day. And noticeable absence is the Holden Monaro of Matt Cherry, car number 44, missing off pole position. 
So this will give Jared Carey a good run into turn number one if he can get away from that beautiful blue Datsun 200B Triple S of Ben Peachy. So we're just waiting for our officials to do their thing. And a big thank you and a big shout out to all of our officials here at carco.com.au Raceway. Thanks very much for giving up your weekend as usual. And I uh, hope everybody is able to make it to our V8 Supercar round being the next event at carco.com.au Raceway as Ben Peachy and Jared Carey have bolted away from Neil Pollard already as they head through the S's and into the left-hander at the end of the S's for the first time. It's Ben Peachy in the 200B Nissan over the 350 Nissan of Jared Carey. Then we go back to the Honda Civic of Neil Pollard and then Peter Kello having a good run in the R32 Nissan. We go back to the Tirana of Gary Utterson being hunted down by John Caligari, that high horsepower VN Commodore be coming on strong towards the end of this one. But it's all Carey trying to catch Ben Peachy at the moment. As they head down into turn number one, Neil Pollard having a great run with a brand new engine on board after depositing his old one down there in turn number six at the last race meeting. Laurie Whittome and Damien Croxon there in the Renault Magan and Tim Riley rounding out the field. Further back in the field, Gary Utterson now coming under attack from Cameron Burns. We go back to Neville Zaccoli as John Caligari puts a big move on under brakes on Neil Pollard, having already gone around Peter Kello in the R32. It's another view of the end of that pass and the acceleration of the VN Commodore compared to the little Honda Civic. Pretty evident down the main straights at carco.com.au raceway. Peachy and Carey having a great battle and Carey actually starting to make some ground on Ben Peachy as this race progressed. Peter Callo now able to get through on Neil Pollard as well. Zaccoli in the Chev Camaro, then Cameron Burns, Stephen Taylor and Damien Croxon rounding out that little pack was Laurie Whittome and Tim Riley. It's Gary Utterson, two Holden products, one old, one fairly new. VZ Commodore versus the LH Tirana as John Caligari picks up a wheel through the bus stop and hard on the brakes into turn number four with Peter Callow in the R32 Nissan holding off Neil Pollard now as they headed up and over the top of the hill. Utterson having a look down the inside of Nigel Wilson. A little bit apprehensive to start with and then tries to go on with it mid-corner. Good drag race down in towards turn number one, but it was won by Gary Utterson. Coming up through the S's, John Caligari and a big pinch of the brakes on the entry into turn number four. Just about fires the machine off the racetrack. Utterson and Wilson still having this great little fight as they headed down into turn number six. But this is where all the action was up the front. Ben Peachy slowly being gained by Jared Carey in the 350 Nissan. They'll be approaching some slower traffic very shortly and as I speak Laurie Widham is the first car the RX-8 Mazda to come under intense scrutiny by Ben Peachy and Jared Carey. starting to deal with some lap traffic now. He's got Neville Zaccoli in front of him in the Chev Camaro, car number 179. And this has allowed Carey to get range up alongside, but at the end, 
it was Ben Peachy over Jared Carey. As far as our improved production, it was John Caligari over Neil Pollard. Streetcar's Ben Peachy over Jared Carey with Peter Callow coming in for third. And our 3E production cars goes to Damien Croxon in the Renault Megane from the RX-8 Mazda of Laurie Whitome. Saloon cars are pro category and our pro-am drivers ready to do battle for race number three here at carco.com.au raceway. And it's Robbie Marcon alongside a vacant grid. Unfortunately for Mason Harvey, looks like he has detonated an engine and would not take any further part in the day. And that's allowed Mark Watkins to slide up into second on the entry into turn number one from Grant Johnson. And we also have Tyson Sadler out there in the Greg Murphy lookalike car, the Kmart car, in up into fourth position. And that great battle with Craig James and Michael Koberstein already starting to develop. Quality field of saloon cars here again today at carco.com.au raceway as our top four are really starting to get away now with Koberstein and James fighting it out for fifth and sixth position overall. So Watkins under attack this time from Grant Johnson. A bit of a uh, rub there on the way down into turn number seven. And Johnson squeezes car number three up into second position from Watkins and Sadler. Robbie Mark on doing it quite well out in front. He'll probably just settle the car down now and continue his drive as Watkins gets the left rear all out over the other side of the ripple strip on the top of the hill here at turn five. And that's allowed Tyson Sadler to gain about a car length on him by the time they got down into turn number six. Reggie Ralph in the VN Commodore, the current Australian Pro-Am champion. It was all Robbie Marcon from Grant Johnson in second position. Nothing that Watkins can do from back in third at the moment. Looking forward and looking in the rear vision mirror as young Tyson Sadler looking to put a move on Mark Watkins. Koberstein and Craig James come through with Jackson Kello sliding through the inside. Oh, unfortunately for Craig James, there's smoke starting to develop from the left rear of the VN Commodore. And on the next lap through, you can see that smoke getting progressively worse as he heads down in towards turn number six. Tyson Sadler in car number 36. Just getting a little bit sideways off turn number seven. But a great battle here with Reg Ralph holding off three cars, including Neil Streetfield and Stevens. And then the Dulux colored car, the ex Lansdale smash repairs car of Warren Ellis in car number 30. Cars still line astern, unfortunately for Craig James. That uh, problem on board developing the smoke, he has uh, decided to back the car down, then gets back into it again down the main straight and the smoke now is profusely coming out of the back left rear quarter panel of that car. And now we pick up on Grant Johnson and a similar thing happening with Grant's car, although this looks like it could be an engine detonating here the smoke coming up from underneath the bonnet for car number three of a Grant Johnson. And a 
across the top of the hill again. It's still Reg Ralph in car number 41 holding off this field of four cars as they head down into turn number six, running out of laps now. And we can see Grant Johnson really smoking badly here on the last lap, trying to limp the model home and get some points. But it's all Robbie Mark on up and over the top of the hill for the last time with Grant Johnson still coming down the hill, trying to make it to the finish line. Mark Watkins slides up the inside of Jackson Kello and Kello goes straight off into the sand here at turn number seven. He'll get out onto the hard stand and be able to rejoin. But it was the chequered flag and it has fallen. And your winner goes to Robbie Marcon, only just in the end from Grant Johnson and Mark Watkins for third place in the pro category. Three from three for Robbie Marcon today. He said taking the win by nearly one full second over Grant Johnson and Mark Watkins and a great drive from Tyson Sadler for fourth and Jackson Kello rounds out our top five in Saloon Car Pro. As far as our Pro-Am category, Michael Koberstein takes the win from Reg Ralph and Adam Koberstein, Damien Stevens for fourth and rounding out our top five, Neil Streetfield. Final race of the day is the sports sedans, sports cars and WA muscle cars. And as per race number two, Ryan Humphreys leaving the go until the very last moment. So they creep up towards the carco.com.au start line and away we go. And Grant Hill looking for a, to out drag Ryan Humphrey down into turn number one. Unfortunately, it doesn't pay off. And Adam Marjoram now going side by side with Grant Hill as they exit turn number one and up through the bus stop. Further back is Walter Eppel, Richard Bloomfield and then the first of the WA muscle cars and this time it's Brett Nile doing a bit better than car number 98 of Clint Rayner at the moment. And then we go back to Chase Hoy in car 777. Good run in car number three at the moment is Walter Eppel got off to a great start and is actually leading Richard Bloomfield in car number 57 as they come down into turn number seven to reel off round late one lap number one. Ryan Humphreys comfortable lead already after lap number one from car 88 of Grand Hill and we go back to Adam Marjoram in the Greg Barr owned VZ Commodore. And then Richard Bloomfield in his beautifully presented Porsche. Very tricky conditions here at carco.com.au Raceway now as the drivers come up and over the top of the hill looking straight at the big orange fireball over there in the west and then down into the shadowed areas as it catches out car number 29 of Mark Watkins in the Dodge Challenger that Walter Eppel able to now move through on car 98 of Clint Rayner he gets it all sideways and lights the rear end up on the way out of turn number one Chase Hoy will be getting a little bit excited by what he's seeing in front at the moment. This will give him every opportunity to have a crack at Clint Rayner. Now Walter Eppel fires a shot from long range and drives straight up the inside of Clint Rayner in car 98. They just about come together on the way out of turn number seven, but the horsepower of the WA muscle car reigns supreme down into turn number one as we catch a beautiful power slide from Mark Watkins in car 29. Brett Nile doing it well comfortably out in front now from Clint Rayner as far as the WA muscle cars and unfortunately for Ron Moller in car number 77 the Ford Mustang loops it on the exit of turn number seven sitting precariously stranded in the middle of the raceway temporarily able to get the car back up and running again 
And there's another angle of Ron just looping the car out. Very unusual to see Ron loop a race car. He doesn't do it very often. Walter Apple now having a pretty lonely race out there by himself in car number three. But Ryan Humphreys, three from three, coming up here for certain, barring any mechanical problems. We go back to Grant Hill, Adam Marjoram, and Richard Bloomfield in the orange and black Porsche. Really good to see Brett Nile out in front here for the last race of the day at carco.com.au raceway. As we pick up on the leaders in our WA muscle car, Clint Rayner definitely starting to get the better of Brett Nile now as he looks for a pass down into turn number one as his nose chopped off by car 54 of Brett Nile. Dodge Challenger, car number 29 of Mark Watkins and the Ford Mustang of Ron Moller. over the hill again it's still car 54 of Brett Nile but Clint Rayner looking really menacing down here on the entry into turn number six couldn't go on with it had to back out and that's allowed Brett Nile to take the lead again as far as our WA muscle cars are concerned Grant Hill was able to get quicker and quicker throughout the day on that fully rebuilt BF Falcon some great driving from Brett Nile to deny Clint Rayner any opportunity to get through here. The car's really starting to move around now on those rear tyres. Richard Bloomfield, of course, running in the sports car category. He'll win three from three here on the Saturday of round number two of the West Australian Sporting Car Club Championship for season 2024. The winner in sports sedans is Ryan Humphreys from Grant Hill in second and Adam Marjoram takes out third position. As far as our sports cars, three from three for Richard Bloomfield over Walter Apple. And our WA muscle cars, Brett Nile takes the win from Clint Rayner and Chase Hoy in car triple seven. Thanks for watching. To find out more, get on to the West Australian Sporting Car Club YouTube channel and we'll see you at the racetrack really soon.